Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and back to our test rigor codeless automation series. So in the last uh, chapter, in the last session, we have seen that how to use the post call. Before that, we have seen how to use the get call, right? So if you remember that we have written this particular script that we were creating a, a user by using the post call. And then after that, we are fetching the same user using the user ID. And then uh, we were validating a couple of things here, right? So this is like a chain kind of thing that we have created that <laughs> API chain. This is like a correlation kind of thing where we are using the post call. And from this post call, we are fetching the ID and using the same ID we are storing in this variable and using the same variable in the get call here, right? So today, what we are going to talk about today, we are going to talk about, let's do a put call. So in order to perform a put call, how will you write the test? So in order to perform a put call, we will start like this. What is the best way of checking that user is really updated or not? I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be dependent on the existing data. So first I'll create a fresh data for me. So let's see, I'll use a post call to create a user, right? And this will give me the user ID. So I'll fetch the user ID here like this, sorry, like this. And then once I fetch the user ID, then after that, I'm going to use it where that I'm going to use, let's see, I can use one get call just to check that uh, this user ID is really created or not. The user ID or user is really created or not, something like this. So I'll use this particular uh, a get call from here. And then after that, I'm just going to use the put call just to update. So I'm going to use this particular same user ID, right? So how will you use it here? Just like in the get call, Let's see whatever the APIs which are available. This is your base URL forward slash user ID. Same thing here. This is my base URL forward slash user ID that I'm going to use it here. And then again, after that, once the get call is, I mean, put call is completely done or user is updated. Again, I'm going to use the get call. I'm going to fetch the data and then check that, okay, the data is really updated or not because I don't have any access to the database. So in that case, this is a, four steps that we have to use it here to make sure that user is really updated or not. So first always create a fresh user, fetch the user ID from the response of the post call, use this user ID in the get call, in the put call, and then the get call. Post should give me, let's see, 201. This get call should give me 200 okay. Put should give me 200 okay. And then again should give me 200 okay here. So this is a script that we have to write it and the test case a description, the title that we can give it here that let's see, update a user, right? So this is what we have to do it here. So it's pretty simple. These are the four steps that we have to write. So I have already written a basic script and then I'll show you how to do that. So this is a complete script. Just copy this. I'll share this script. Don't worry. And then I'm just going to paste it over here, right? So if you uh, see this carefully, First of all, what are we doing? So this is my first, let me just cut it from here. This is my first call. Okay. The post API. First of all, I'm generating a unique email ID, storing it here. And then here I'm doing what here. I'm just calling this particular API. These are the headers information that we are passing. We are passing the token also here. You see that authorization beta token. And this is the data that I'm supplying. <clears throat> the name is equal to this. Naveen automation, gender, mail, email, and whatever the random email ID that you have generated, I'm just using it over here. And then the status is active and checking that once you get the response, fetch the user ID from there and save it as created user ID here, right? Just like I shown you in the last session also that in the postman, when we create a fresh user, for example, see this, I'm creating a fresh user here. When I create it, I want to fetch a user ID. So this is a user ID. So I'm writing dollar dot ID here. Dollar means go to the root of the JSON and then fetch the ID here. So same thing that we are doing it here, dollar dot ID from here, store it in this variable. Now this variable that I can use it in the upcoming calls. So this is my second call. The second call is what? This is the second call that get the user once again. So this is will be my second call that get the user id store this take this particular user id i'm using it over here see this dollar and the variable and then after that the header token everything will remain same them saying that okay whatever the response that you are getting you store it in this particular variable 
creating a variable let's see user details before update check the status code is 200 or not and then here in this particular variable i'm checking that it contains navid automation or whatever the random email id that we created is containing or not right because the user is created here in this call and then in the get call i'm checking validations are very important so these are my assertions right so these are the two assertions that we have written that once you create the user making sure that okay when you fetch the user navin automation is there or not and whatever the email id that you have created it contains that email id or not so this is the second call then after that this is my third call the third call is what is about the put call right so i'm just going to take this particular put call and then i simply say okay fine this is your put call it means now i really want to update here so again i'm going to generate the updated email id right a new email id let's say i really want to update and here i'm writing let's see my new name also so earlier that i created a user it was that time it was only name equal to navin automation then i'm saying the new name is equal to what let's see the new name is equal to navin automation labs and whatever the updated email id right i'm just going to use it here see it's so easy you don't need to write any you know complex logic and code and everything here the status is equal to as it is and then check the status code is 200 fine this is also done and then finally what i'm doing then again i'm checking the get call so here this is my last call once again that uh, get call once again that get the updated user id right so whatever i'm fetching the same created user id header token everything will remain same store it in this variable see giving a nice naming convention here that user details after the update and then it contains navin automation labs it means the new name that we have given yes the new name is it containing the updated email id yes updated email id and then the status is still active or not yes that is also we are doing it over here so earlier the status that we created it was active and this is still active only after updating also see this is my put call right this is a put call and you see that only two values i'm changing name and email but i'm along with that i'm checking the status is also active or not so these are the three validations or assertions we have written here so this is my assertion part here these are my assertions and then after that that's it so it's such a plain script if you see that we have written and then let's see is it really working or not so this is update a user if you write the workflow here this is like first we are using the post call and then after that we are using a get call then we are using a put call then we are using again a get call here so this is four apis we are using in this chain here and then you simple add and run perfect and uh, let's see is it really working or not okay i started now and you see that back to back working and then everything looks perfect within seconds the test case got executed and it got passed here and you can check your details first of all see that the random email id got generated here and then after that more details show extra information this is your get call right this is your post call initially that you created show extra information so you can check the logs also the user got created then after that again you check that this is again another update call you are using the put call over here and after put call again you are checking a uh, get call once again that user is really updated or not so yes the user is updated you see that navin automation labs is updated email id also randomly got updated here and then finally we are checking <coughs> the uh, status and other things the assertions also we are checking it over here the check the value stored and other things absolutely perfectly working fine here so the overall test got passed here that's without any problem right but if you notice one thing here that uh, you know you can ask this question that okay this is a token that we are using this bearer token is hard coded here it should not be exposed here it's fine that also you can replace it so what you can do i'll just copy this particular token and i can store it as a global variable in the configuration or in the test data so i can do one thing i can just simply go to the test data section here click on test data create a global variable click on add here and then what kind of type i'll say hidden type i don't want to display here so variable name you can say let's see token id something like this i'm writing this is the token id variable that i'm going to use it and the value of this is this so it's completely hidden and then add it here so you see that okay one global variable that we have created now if i really want to use this global variable 
I could use it in my script. Tomorrow token ID is getting changed, so you just need to change it at one place. So again, go to the test cases and uh, let's open this. And then I simply say quick edit. And here we have to change it. Right. So how to change it? See, only one formation, one line that you have to write here. I have already written. What you have to do here is that whenever you have to update the token, you have to write the script like this. I mean, you have to write the plain English like this. That end from the string parameters, it will automatically go and check in the global variable. And what is a global variable ID that we have used here? A token ID, the name of the variable that we have given dollar token ID, you have to give it here and that's it. So I'm just using as it is here. So I'll just copy this line from here. Okay. And then I will update here and then I'll copy paste. Okay. So what are we doing here is, um, okay, let me check it again. And from the string width. So after this, I'm just going to replace this entire thing and then paste it over here. So and a string from this and body this. Okay. So no hard coded value. Same thing for this guy also from here to here. Paste it here. Same thing for um, from here to here as well. This one also paste it here. And then after that, uh, this thing also we have to use it here. So just simple remove this carefully. Remove this thing also hard coded value and remove that. Perfect. So now let me just copy this entire thing and let's see is it really working or not. Okay. So I'm just going to copy this and then uh, come back here. And then let's simple control A, replace that and paste it here. Comment and all you can add it later. So once again, you see that, okay, there is no hard coded value for my token, right? No hard coded value for the email ID also. For name, if you want to write the unique e name also, let's say you want to generate. So you can generate it here. See, unique name and then save as a variable name. So let's see, this is the username. I can use it here. Let's see, username. So unique name and save as username. So if you say, okay, no, every time the new name should be generated, then you can replace this guy from here and you can use dollar username if you want that. So name, email ID, it looks like a faker kind of API. Just be use it in the Java, right? Or other things you can use here as well. Unique random numbers, random email ID names you can generate here. And then after that, let's see update and reset. It will start from the beginning once again. And uh, it should pick the token ID from there. So you see that, okay, yeah, it's absolutely working fine. The test case got passed here. So I really want to check that, okay, when I was using the post call or something, let's see what is the token ID. Is it really taking the token ID from there? So yes, this is my token ID. You see that authorization bearer token. It took from there. It means there is no hard coded value. It took the data from the test data. So this is absolutely working fine. See, it's so easy. Within like few five minutes, I have written my test case here. So how many test cases we have written so far? We have written, if you see that we have written all these test cases. Let me just simple refresh this page once again. Right. So four to five test cases we have written. If you really want to run all of them together, once again, you can run it. So you see that, okay, test number one, two, three, four, five test cases that we have written. And then if you really want to run multiple, all of them together, you can select all five, you know, uh, test cases from here. And then you can run all of them together in the parallel mode. So let's run it and let's see. So I'm simple saying yes. So now all of them in the in progress and then all of them will start in some time. So let's see, is it really working or not? And then within a few seconds, it will start running your test and then we will see the results also there. So you can just open how exactly the execution is happening. You can open and check it there as well. All of them, you can check it at the same time. So let's see. I think it's perfectly working fine. You see that they all got started and then we can check one by one the status also there. Perfect. Perfect. So the last one already got passed here. This is good. And uh, just a second. Let me check. Now this is also passed. This is also passed. And this is also passed. So all of them got triggered and successfully executed without any problem. If I really want to see the results, I can just simply go to the report section here. And this is your la last execution. Five test cases got passed here. The overall result got passed here. If you really want to download the PDF, you can download this particular PDF and then you can just simply use it. 
I mean, this is a simple PDF. If you really want to share it with your your testers or team or anyone, I think they should improve this. Okay, but this is fine. This is saying total five test cases absolutely working fine. Okay. And then if you really want to see the tree view as a tree view for the UI is fine, but for as such, we don't have any tree view here. And then uh, report section, if any errors are there, you can check it here as a, there are no errors. Again, you want to go back to the test cases. You can just simple see the test cases, add more test cases here like that, right? Tomorrow you're on to run only specific one. You can select the specific checkbox and then you can run it all of them together in the parallel mode that also you can use it here. If you really want to delete anyone, you can just simple delete, right? That also you can use it here. You want to add the label, you can add the label also that. So let's say I'm just simple adding the label that this is by API test, right? So apply to this only or apply to all selected. So let's see, apply to, uh, let me just simple select it and then write the label. Let's see here I'm writing API. Enter, apply to all selected. So now all the test cases are related to API. This is just like in test ng, we have groups concept, right? Same thing here. We have the labels concept here, right? And you can, if you want to search, you can search on the basis of text, content, labels, name, steps. You can just search and then use it accordingly here. So just try that. This is about the put call, right? Same thing we can do the delete call also that I'll show you in the next chapter. So try that. If you're really interested to use test trigger, guys, you can use my 15% discount uh, link. If you really want to use it, you can showcase a POC or everything to the management. If you're looking for some codeless automation tool, this tool is very, very powerful. You can do everything here. You can do UI testing, API testing, mobile testing, desktop automation. Also, you can perform here. And there are various out of the box scenarios, some advanced complex scenarios. Also, you can do it here. Let's see, capture, scan. Uh, QR, you can make the database connectivity also from here, audio testing, browser cookies, email testing, login support, SMS messages, phone calls, uploading files. And there are some out of the advanced box scenarios like JavaScript support, you know, screen page structure and all those things like you can just do it here. The documentation also is very easy, visual testing and all those things. And it's purely codeless automation tool. And if you're really interested, go for it. If you're looking for a demo, just contact me and then write a comment over there. But uh, I'll share one 15% discount if you are looking for, and then you can get the 15% discount on the overall price from that link. So that's all for this video, guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you all.